Now it's time for a spotlight on the cloud, AI stocks. Obviously, the winners of 2023. What's in store for 2024? Stephen Dickens is with us, VP and Practice Lead at the Futurum Group. Thank you for being with us. So what shaped 2023? And will it be similar or different in 2024? Well, obviously AI. AI has been part of every announcement we've been involved in this year, both mm -hmm. from an infrastructure level and from how that sort of manifests itself at the application level. So I think that's the key trend that shaped this year. I think that's going to shape 2024 going into, the, into next year as well. I, start, I think we're starting to see some maturity. We're starting to see some of those trend lines start to solidify. So I think it's going to be interesting times ahead. So when you think about these names, I mean, there are the obvious and the less obvious. Can you break it down for us? So I think there's some of the obvious ones. NVIDIA would be in there. You'd see AMD in there. There's some good stuff coming from Intel. So I think, you know, those obviously at a semiconductor level, we've seen a lot of um, action from, I was at it, um, AWS's huge event a couple of weeks ago, part of Amazon. You're going to see, obviously, Microsoft and Google. So I think, you know, those key big names are going to be there through 2024. But I think we're starting to see AI come through into a lot of smaller names. HashiCorp reported earnings on what Friday. What was that? HashiCorp. Okay. So smaller, mid-sized software company, 17% hmm. growth. Starting to see AI come through into the operations space as well. So platform engineering, some of those other sort of key trends. So away from some of the bigger highlights and the headlines, mm -hmm. you're still going to see AI coming through into observability, some of the security software. So I think AI is going to infuse across the sector. I see, I see. And then when you think about um, cybersecurity oh, no, too, where does that fit in? So I think the threat landscape is really fascinating. We did some research that just published with Commvault. 97% of executives that we interviewed saw um, concern and over 40% of those were f very concerned about the ransomware landscape. So I think the threats are real. That's still a, hit, a, a tailwind for yeah. big stocks like CrowdStrike, Palo Alto, we're still going to see that sector continue to grow through 2024. What do they need to work on? It was interesting because we started to hear a lot of different companies using AI, language about AI in the conference calls. I mean, even mm -hmm. Campbell's Soup. I use that one a lot. I, I didn't see I that know, one. But that's the whole point is sort of understanding the business or getting things from point A to point B in a better way, whether it's using robots, using AI software, using things to determine what you need and what you don't need. Um, were there any surprises to you? So I think we've, there's been a lot of hype this year. It's been mm -hmm. AI washing of a lot of the keynotes that I've had the opportunity to, to watch. But I think we're now starting to reach some of the maturity phase. I was chatting to the team at Lenovo this week, some of the things that they've got coming. We're starting to see it come through at an infrastructure level. We're starting to see up and down the stack, AI start to become right. real. So I think we're going to see that continue through 24. Um, you said key players, Cisco closing the Splunk acquisition, Datadog, Dynatrace. Why do those names all jump out at you? And do you see more activity for mergers and acquisitions? So, so I, th I think m and is starting to come through. We're starting to see some of those now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Broadcom making some announcements about what they're going to be doing with the VMware organization, a lot of simplification, and their strategy hit the market and made some announcements on Monday. Massive acquisition by Cisco of Splunk. AI is part of that story from an observability point of view. Yeah. And then across the rest of the observability space, names like Datadog and Dynatrace also going to be infusing their solutions with AI. So I think there's going to be a lot to, of complexity that needs to be managed. So from the observability point of view, right. bringing AI to simplify that for the operators is going to be key. And then you said a focus on sustainability, reducing the carbon footprint of data centers and IT operations. And you have some names that you named there. So that was going to be one of my big picks if you'd have asked me this time last year about yeah. what I expected in 23. Oh, so tell so, me. So I think the macro didn't help with the ESG focus. A lot of people got tactical. A lot of people focused on riffs. A lot of people focused on the mechanics of the business. And some of those ESG pledges kind of maybe took a back seat. 
I think now we're in a stronger market. I'm expecting ESG to come back to the forefront. I mm. think some of the solutions I'm seeing from vendors like HPE and Lenovo started to come through to really help vendors who have clients who are looking to address their ESG claims and sort of get back on track with those. Yeah, you have IBM, Lenovo, HP, and Dell. Yeah, so IBM's doing some fantastic things deep down in the server to just improve the um, capabilities, run them the same workload on less processors. That translates into data center power and cooling savings. That helps you with your ESG claims. So down in the weeds, technical stuff, but actually helps the boardroom yeah. hit their ESG claims that they've made to the market. All right, Stephen Dickens, the Futurum Group, thank you so much. Thank Great you, to Nicole. see you. Appreciate it.